Hey dear, it's Zimzi here, and recently I read stories that dive into darker topics like obsession and not-so-healthy relationships, and in that vein and territory, some of these topics some readers might find disturbing, but you know yourself better than I do, so if you're interested in hearing about darker parts of the human psyche, let's get into my non-spoiler reviews. First, we have a small indie novella, which was given to me as a review copy by the author herself, and this is Waif by Samantha Kolesnik, and the story follows Samantha, who's trapped in an unhappy marriage to her husband, Matt, who's super wealthy, but still, she feels empty inside, and one day, when she runs into this very attractive man at the grocery store, she starts fantasizing about him and eventually she confesses this to her husband and her husband is like, okay, well, tell me about your dream man and I will get plastic surgery to turn myself into him. So they start looking around and no like trustworthy plastic surgeon wants to do the amount of plastic surgery he's requesting. So, they resort to a back alley doctor who might not be certified, and soon they find themselves caught up in the underbelly world of adult film. And I found this story so interesting. It like asks the question, can you turn yourself into your spouse's like dream partner? Can you do that surgically? And would that necessarily change them on the inside? Maybe or maybe not. Read and find out. But also, what I really loved about this novella is that it's this intimate and raw portrait of a dysfunctional marriage, and the author does such a good job of placing us in Angela's head, and sometimes it's not the most pleasant place to be. On top of that, the writing is absolutely gorgeous and poetic, and this feels like a very like literary type novella. However, the one thing that I wish had been explored more is I actually wish that the novella talked more about the underground adult film side of things. And it mentions like in the summary in the back that Angela joins a queer gang of adult film workers. <laughs> and to me that's so interesting and I wish that had been talked about more and explored more. However, I think probably due to its length as a novella, that might have been cut a little short. Overall though, I feel like this is a wonderful examination of trauma and the effects of being within a bad relationship. So that part was incredible. Okay, next we have a black comedy that has some aspects of psychological and body horror, especially towards the end, and the book I'm talking about is A Touch of Jen, which follows an unhappy couple, again, an unhappy couple, named Rummy and Alicia, and Rummy and Alicia are obsessed with Rummy's former co-worker named Jen, like they stalk her on social media, and Alicia likes to roleplay as Jen. So one day Remy decides to get back in touch with Jen and he texts her and like says that he wants to rekindle their friendship. And so the three of them get into a bizarre relationship that starts just downward spiraling. And the story escalates to the point that it gets into like Cronenberg territory. It's super trippy. It's bananas towards the end. Like, just wait, just wait. I, at the beginning, it seems kind of normal-ish, and then it just gets weirder and weirder, and that's saying something coming from me. <laughs> so yeah, this is like a really fascinating, compelling ride. Yeah. I do think it's an interesting commentary on our relationship with social media. So there is like substance to this novel and it's entertaining and bizarre and disturbing as heck. <laughs> okay, last but not least, I have a manga named after a type of food poisoning caused by eating fish toxins. And this is Sea Guatera. 
The story centers around Yusuke Ogino, who is a boy that's really badly bullied, so his form of escape is dreaming of being able to ride a bike. And at bike school, he runs into a beautiful classmate of his named Yumi, and to his surprise, Yumi starts taking an interest in him, and their relationship starts to blossom, and he's just on cloud nine, he's on top of the world, and he feels like bullying can't bother him anymore. However, his happiness might be short-lived because someone appears to be stalking them. I would probably describe this manga series as a dramedy. It's a drama and a comedy, and it goes between the two where there's <laughs> genuine funny moments, and then it gets kind of really messed up. And I noticed I checked the reviews afterwards, and a lot of people DNF'd it because it's disturbing, but I don't, I'm okay with that. Um, I know my own comfort levels. I would say it's probably, like, tonally wise, it reminds me of. Shuzo Oshimi's Flowers of Evil. So if you like that one, I think you'd probably enjoy this one as well. Yeah, this is just a really raw and heavy hitting coming of age story. I think maybe because it feels so believable that it kind of turned off some readers, but I still feel like it's a wonderful psychological examination. Okay, those are the psychological, kind of leaning on the disturbing side of stories that I have for you today. If you have any recommendations, whether it's a novel, novella, or manga, let me know down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the flip side. See ya!